I was wrong in doing what I did. No, 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 no. Are you listening? Sean here, and hopefully today's video is a little more coherent than yesterday's. Let's talk about Lorne and money. He has the weirdest relationship with money. Now, first off, if you're new to the Lornography community and you've unfortunately discovered me, welcome. There are plenty of other creators out there you can check out. Just look up his name, obviously, or look up Lornography. Or if you want to see the entire thing, look up Teacap Bowling Green. Or you can look up the word CAWD, C-A-W-D, and prepare to be amazed and astounded. To misquote the great James T. Kirk, out of all the souls I've met, he was the least human. Ah, yes. So let's talk about Lauren and money. Now, when Lauren got out of prison, whatever money he had was gone. Whatever chance he had, prospect he had, gone. He had nothing. He came home and was living off his mom. There's nothing wrong with that if you're in a bad spot. When I got a divorce, I literally had zero money. I was negative in my bank account often, but I just kept pushing. I kept figuring out a way to dig out, and I did. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I moved in with my mom for two months. I paid rent to my mom. I helped her pay the utilities, my mom and dad. They had a split level home. It wasn't like fancy, but it was well enough where I could live downstairs. Got a job moved the hell out. That was it. I never lived with them again. I think if Lauren's mom would have allowed him, more importantly, if they had the room, the room, what a movie. If they had the room, Lauren would have moved in. He would have been living there, tried not to pay rent, would have been buying beer and cigarettes, looking his mom in the eye. Well, mama, I ain't got no money. Well, you got money to spend on beer and cigarettes, and you know Lorne. <laughs> I know, Mom, you know, but, you know, I gotta have that stuff. And not wanting to deal with him probably would have allowed it. Lorne getting out of prison, man. Nothing. And no plan. That was the thing. He got out, and he thought YouTube was his, it was his golden goose. But I've got news especially now that we found out YouTube was shadow banning anybody not going with the narrative, the message. Imagine Lorne. I mean, he's on, he's literally in the Me Too spectrum, especially with real victims. If he would have gotten any kind of traction and started to make any kind of money, somebody would have taken a look at him. Just like on Twitter now, Twitter Blue, where you have to get verified, they have to Research you, make sure you're not some kind of lunatic monster. Look at what they did to the BBC and all these other people who were state funded. <laughs> the, the most baller move I've ever seen has been the psychotic Canadian broadcast, whatever they are, and they came out and said, we're less than 70% funded by the state. So Elon Musk, I'm sorry to get up on a tangent, Elon Musk... <laughs> He put 69% funded by the state, it, it, or by that country, whatever it was. It was beautiful. It was amazing. But they would have done a little check on Lauren Armstrong, and this guy would have been making money off the fact that he tried to diddle a child. There was no way this guy was getting any money, and I think we all understood at one point, because he doesn't do any research, that he thought he was going to get a dollar a view. Now that little tidbit of information is not something I would have personally hung my hat on, but Lauren hung his hat on that. He was certain that was, I need to do as he told the judge when Shins and Andrew went to watch his trial. I need to do my cooking show. I want it got on the internet and YouTube. And they were just like, dude, anybody with any sense would go and look at your channel and read the comments and go, holy shit. This guy needs to be as far away from the internet as possible. Watching those videos, some of them look like POW. The one video that Lauren made that's on YouTube that I swear to God is when he goes, he looks like a serial killer and he's looking at the video, I love you, I love you. He looks like a POW in those shower videos, POW videos. Roy's right off screen, 
Gun to his head, telling Lauren, now you better shower, boy. Yeah, nice and... Oh, that's gross. Oh, my God. Maybe he was used to it because he was somebody's bitch in prison. I don't know. I'm certain they took his commissary. I mean, this is a guy who would have cried and curled up in a ball if they said, give me your stuff. If he was in a secured area, which I think we have all done our research and figured out he pretty much was the entire time, then maybe he wouldn't have to worry about that. But every kid diddler I've ever heard about, if you want to listen to some stories, go to Jay Williams' Live Life. He was in there. If you were a kid diddler, they were walking in, taking your TV. They weren't even asking. Taking your TV, taking your commissary. I don't even think they would beat the shit out of you. They would just make your life a living hell. But that would have been Lauren's prison life. And I apologize for Twitter. It's been my main source of entertainment, watching people get owned. It's just wonderful. Well, back to Lauren and how he got out and had nothing. Absolutely zero. So he possibly lives with his mom, whines, cries, complains, until somebody, his mom probably said, can somebody help me get him out of here? Can you imagine how stinky it was? How gross? His pubes all over the place and his laughing. He smells like three-day-old burnt ham and freaking cigarettes and beer hot ass breath his mom probably said can you please help me get this son of a bitch out of the house oh look at uncle clay somebody said yes i've got a trailer he can move in i don't even know if the person died but somebody said there's a trailer available get that son of a bitch out in there because we're not talking about what happened before the sting we're talking about what happened after. If he showed me a plane ticket to Seattle, I would need to see video proof that he got on the plane and went all the way to Seattle and actually moved into somewhere. You cannot trust him. The dude is a straight up liar. So he had no money and he gets that relationship, as he thought, with Ramona. She never said, I love you. She never said, we're boyfriend, girlfriend. She never said anything. But of course, Lorne assumed a woman is talking to him, so they're together. How many times during that saga, and if you're new to the Lorne Arkley community, you'll see he goes back, he knows he has no money. He always projects everything that he knows is wrong with him onto other guys. He knows he's broke, he has no money, he has nothing going for himself. So he says, you a money girl? He's got all that fucking money. Because he's a doctor. I mean, genius, he was everything Lauren could never be. Lauren couldn't even keep a job. The only reason he kept that truck job is so that he could talk to Ramona for 10 hours or so. If I was Bill Gates, Elon Musk, or some of these people who have full lives where they're traveling the world doing things. George Lucas with all those stories about making Star Wars. Anybody. I wouldn't have 10 hours worth of conversations a day. Ramona had a job and he wanted to be on the phone with her. But he was always going back to, you see a money guy? Look at money girl. He's got a lot of money. You just like him because he's got a lot of money and he could buy her things and it just drove Lauren crazy. Money don't mean shit to me. Okay, that's because you don't have any. We've, we've all figured that out. When you don't have any money, obviously it doesn't mean anything. I don't mean shit to you. Obviously it doesn't mean anything. Because you're not trying to earn any of it. I mean, money is important in this society. It really is. You, you've got to do something. You have to, you have to earn your way. You want to try to make a better life. But not Lauren. He didn't want to earn it. He wanted to complain that somebody else was earning it and that Ramona might possibly want to be with somebody who can help support a good life for her. Someone who's equal to the task that can contribute like she is. But Lauren didn't care. He just wanted to complain about the fact that fucking doctor, doctor, had a lot of money. We know what happened during the Psycho Saga. And for those of you who don't know what that is, just, it's Debbie. Debbie. Furious that, you know, somebody brought her a cup of coffee. Pretty much since Debbie, who was 
living a, I guess, a good life. Casey's dad had a lot of money, and he was furious. Your dad is gross. He's gross. Lauren, I don't want to talk about my abuse. Your dad is gross. Let's talk about your abuse. And let me tell everybody who'll listen. But we're talking about when Jamie, who was played by, I believe, Wine Lover at the time, was telling him about how much money she was making as a porn star. And Lorne Lynn Armstrong, who shit away his business, his life, and failed at everything he ever did, is lecturing her on how quickly three hundred dollars or four hundred thousand dollars, whatever it was, can go and what to invest it in. This dude living in a hobbit hole that's collapsing around him is lecturing this successful woman who loves her job that she needs to quit that job and she also needs to not invest money into anything that might make her money. Then he starts talking about investing in Maine. A subtle hint that you should come out here closer to me. Now I'm not asking you to, but boy, Maine looks really good, doesn't it? A destination, I don't know about you, but I, I don't hear people go, hey, where are you going on vacation? I'm going to fucking Maine to see Uncle Clay. I don't think a lot of people pick that as their destination. I'm just saying. But of course, Lauren lecturing her, money don't mean shit to me. That money's going to go away. You're going to be broke like me. You'll see, because if I go broke, everybody else has to go broke, because I know best. What kind of bizarro world do you have to live in to think like that? To know you got busted on TCAP and all of this other stuff, and yet you're still talking about how awesome you are and everything else. You stole money. You stole money, Lauren. A lot of money. Now, you could have used that money, invested in something, but instead, you blew it all. Probably on extra beer cigarettes, shit you didn't need, going to clubs, buying drinks, buying drinks for every woman in the bar, throwing money around, then you went to Nashville, and the rest is history. Because you, sir, are a piece of shit. Let's jump forward to Blue Boy, who has a successful career, movies, met influential people, making good money, and what does Lauren want her to do? quit her job because it's an inconvenience to him to think about the fact that she's kissing another guy on set and simulating sex. Lauren has never even simulated it. So, I mean, unless you count humping a tree or his pillow, he's never even simulated it with a woman. So this is troublesome to him. Very troublesome. He accepted Jamie because she just stood up and said, fuck you, I'm not quitting my porn star job. Or the robot. But Lauren, man, he wants everybody to quit what they're doing, and he's got all these plans, and he wants them to move to Maine, come out there, be a part of his failure. Now, the weirdest thing was, Lauren didn't have any money when it came to Casey, so what this dipshit thought was, hey, you know what? I'm going to give her complete access to my bank account to see how much I'm in debt, to see the negative balances because they were always negative. He was getting payday loans, I think, on work he still hadn't done. I mean, this is how he got in trouble with Betty, getting paid beforehand. Then taking that money because, well, crap. Well, crap, I don't have to work now. I've already got the money. I'll just move on, they'll never miss it. How baffling is that? I mean, to think that there are people out there like that. Lauren Lynn Armstrong, the cream of the crop, the top, the man, giving this actress who actually walked in while he was getting busted, who was a part of the sting, part of the ruination of his life, and he thought that she had madly fallen in love with him when she walked in and saw him. So what did he do? Again, he shared his epic failure with this woman who he's trying to impress and trying to say, come out and live with me, or I'm gonna come out and live with you. And I'm sure that Lauren thought, if I move out of the same state as my bank, that debt goes away. 
If I'm negative in my bank account, I don't want to go screaming that to especially to the people that matter. Casey shouldn't have mattered to him, but she did. Never met her in person, although I'm sure he convinced himself that it was really her. Well, technically, we did meet. You know, I trust you. I don't know how many times over the years he said, I trust you, but I want you to tell me the truth. I believe you, but I want you to tell me the truth. And then he pulls out a dinner ring for the robot slash Jamie. What I got here, $5,000 dinner ring, which is, we all know, supposed to symbolize a woman's independence. But he gave her a, was going to give her a $5,000 dinner ring that he probably bought at an auction for ten dollars you know then just how much can I make this sound how much money did she mention before here's five grand I took out a loan I took out a ten dollar loan to get this some bitch but he wants to give her a five thousand dollar dinner ring a guy that money doesn't mean anything to didn't ask her what she wanted didn't care about her interest decided he was going to go out and buy her jewelry which is more proof this motherfucker has never had a relationship because the worst thing you can do is give a woman what you want to give her instead of asking what it is that she wants, what's she interested in, what is she like, learning all of this. One anniversary, I remember I gave the best gift ever. I have a distinct art style and I did this tree with this art style and colored it in with gray. I mean, it took a while, but I gave it to her, I had a quote on the bottom and that was probably the best gift she ever received, according to her. Because I put a lot of work in, and I just did something that I knew she would like. Lauren has never done that, which is why the $5,000 dinner ring came out, when he probably could have gotten something much cheaper that would have meant a lot more to her. But this is a guy that doesn't know the value of money. He doesn't, he, ha he doesn't never had any money, so when he gets it, he goes bonkers. Well, I remember the doctor gave her a $5,000, gave Ramona a $5,000 diamond ring. Now I'm going to buy this supposedly diamond ring that's worth $5,000 because $5,000 is the standard for $10,000 or whatever it is. He probably couldn't get that kind of, you know, $20 loan. I'm not saying that money is everything, but I am saying that when you don't know what it is, you don't know what is valuable and what is not. You don't know how much to spend. You don't know, you never had a relationship. You don't know how much money means to someone else and the fact that they don't talk about it all the time and the fact that what you value is not the same thing as they do and that a woman doesn't want only money. They want, secure, they want to feel secure and they want to feel com comfortable. They want to be. Ha they just want to be happy. Make them laugh. Make them feel protected and secure. They can protect themselves, but what I'm saying is, they want to know that somebody else is there, and it's going to be down to ride when the shit hits the fan. You're both going to be on the motorcycle. You're both going to ride into the storm. It's not just going to be her, and that's what I mean by protection. And Lauren, you can't offer any of that security. It would be a one-sided relationship where she's feeling vulnerable all the time and knowing that the financial responsibility is going to be hers. So Lauren and money, they just don't mix. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.